Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be going over the selection area basics. This is going to be part one of a two-part series. My next tutorial will be the selection area more advanced concepts and of course for this tutorial I'm using the latest version of GIMP which is GIMP 2.10.8 at the time of this recording. But of course, before I get into all that, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in our GIMP 2.10 photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon and get some awesome GIMP extras in return. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So the photo I'll be using in today's tutorial is one that I took myself and I'll include a link to this in the description of the video of course. But let's dive in here to selection areas. Selection areas in their simplest form can be thought of as containers that isolate parts of an image for editing, adjusting, adding effects, erasing, cutting or copying, and painting among other things. The dashed line that draws the boundary of these containers is called the contour line. So if I click and drag with my rectangle select tool over here and I just clicked on this in my toolbox or you can hit R on your keyboard. So the line right here between the selection area that you drew and the rest of the image is called the contour line. The dashed lines that move around the contour line that you guys can see here are called marching ants. These marching ants tell you what area the contour line is selecting. So it's just displaying the boundary of the contour line. Again, if I use another selection tool like the ellipse select tool, you'll see in this case you also have a contour line here and you also have the marching ants. Because this is not a rectangle, it is an ellipse shape. It is actually enclosed in a rectangle, but the rectangle itself is not the contour line. So the contour line is always being outlined by these marching ants here. So that's always how you could tell uh, that that is the selection area that you have selected on your image. So anytime you have one of these boundary boxes, you can use it to expand or compress your shape. So you can see here that I can move my shape around here. And all I have to do is hover over either one of the corners or hover over one of the sides here, and that is allowing me to change the dimensions here of the area that I'm selecting using my selection tool. So I'll come back over here to my rectangle select tool and just redraw a rectangle. And by the way, you'll notice that when I draw this selection area, the other selection area that I drew before disappears. That's because the mode of my selection tool right now over here in my selection tool options is set to replace the current selection. So anytime I draw an additional selection area, it's going to replace whatever was there before. There are three other modes here that I'm not going to go over in this tutorial. I go over those in a couple other tutorials. The one that you guys should check out is the GIMP 2.10 Basics tutorial. That is going to have the most in-depth information on the selection modes here. So you'll notice also that everything inside my contour line is bright and everything outside it is dimmed. And that's because over here in my tool options, I have this highlight option checked. So if I uncheck that, you'll see that it's just going to draw my selection area with the contour lines and the marching ants, and it's not going to dim the area outside. But if I do check that, it will dim everything outside and you can adjust the highlight opacity here so you could determine how dark or how light that area outside your contour lines is. So back to marching ants, these are important because you can invert a selection by going to select invert or you can hit control I on your keyboard as the shortcut key. And now you'll see that there are marching ants going along the outside of our composition here. So the marching ants are now going around the layer boundary as well as along their contour line. So what this indicates is that your selection area is now between the two marching ant boundaries versus inside of our contour line. So this is actually no longer selected. It is this area right here in between our two sets of marching ants. So these marching ants really help to tell us what area is being selected, especially when we invert our selection. You'll also notice that the highlight area disappeared entirely. So it's not going to switch inside to the original selection area that we drew whenever you invert your selection. So the highlight area when you invert it is no longer telling us what we have selected and what is not selected. So it's no longer of any use to us when we invert it. So one other thing to mention here about inverted selections is that if I click here inside the inverted selection area, it's going to give me that boundary box again, which is going to allow me to resize or reshape my selection area. But if I do that, you'll see that the larger portion of my selection area here, which is the boundary of our layer here, is shrunk down. It's basically going to take on that new shape of just the larger selection area, the larger part of the selection area. 
So you see that when I release this, the new selection area is this right here. It's no longer taking out that chunk in the middle that we had. So just keep that in mind when you're using the inverted selection feature. I'll hit Control Z and that'll bring up my original selection that we created from the inverted selection. And then I'll hit Control I to invert that. So you'll see that even though we inverted this back to the original selection, the highlight is not active right now. All I have to do to activate that is just click in the center of our selection area, and that will turn this into our active selection. When an area is selected, such as this one, you can fill that area in with the color you have selected using any of the paint tools. So right here I have my foreground color selected, and then I also have a background color here. So if I grab, let's say, my bucket fill tool, and let's create a new layer, and I've already named this one selection, and I'm gonna set the fill width to transparency and click OK. So we have a new layer here, and I have my bucket fill tool. My foreground color is set to white. If I click, it's going to fill in the selection area with that white. So I'll hit Control Z to undo that. I can also go to Edit, Fill with Foreground Color, and that's going to accomplish the same thing. And I'll hit Control Z, or I can go to Edit, Fill with background color, that's going to fill it with our background color, which is black right now, and I'll hit Control Z again. Or one last time, I can go to Edit, Fill with Pattern, and whatever our active pattern is set to right now, which you can always see over here in the Pattern Stockable dialog box. So this is the patterns that come with GIMP, and over here is our active pattern right now. So it's going to fill that in with the active pattern. So I'll hit Control Z to undo that. You can also, again, use any of the paint tools here, so I can use my paintbrush tool and let me increase the size of my paintbrush. And again, right now, my foreground color is set to white, so I can paint this in with white, and it's going to be cut off by our selection area contour line or just the boundary of our selection, so it's not going to paint anything outside of that selection area. So I'll hit Control z to undo that. Let me now just go ahead and delete this selection layer. So I'm clicked on our original layer again right here over in the Layers panel. If you hit the delete key on your keyboard, that is going to clear whatever is inside of the selection area from your image. Right now, I do not have what's called an alpha channel set to this image, so it's going to show up as our background color. If I hit Control Z, right click on this layer and go to add alpha channel, and then hit my delete key, you'll see now this checkerboard pattern shows up. That represents transparency. So we have effectively deleted all of the pixels within the contour area here in our selection area and revealed the transparency behind our image. I'll hit Control Z to undo that. You can also perform that same task by going to Edit Clear, but of course it is quicker to use that shortcut, the Delete key, to perform that action. When you have a selection area drawn like this or you have an active selection area, you can add a filter or an image adjustment and it's only going to apply to the area or the pixels within the selection area. So for example, if I go to Colors, Color Balance, and I just tweak the colors of my image here, you'll see the colors of the image are only changing inside of our selection area. I'll just come over here to Shadows, and I'm just randomly adjusting this and uh, making it pretty drastic here just for demonstration purposes. So here is a before, here's an after, I'll click OK. And so those color balance adjustments I made only apply inside of our selection area. If you want to deselect your selection area, you can hit Control shift a on your keyboard. That's the shortcut key for Select None right here. If you don't have an active selection area, the Select None will be grayed out as it is right here. If you want to select your entire composition or Select All, go to Control a and you'll see the marching ants now will go around your entire composition. That just indicates that everything on here is selected. You can also go to Select All right here in your Select menu, and that'll perform the same action. I'll hit Control shift a to deselect that. Selection areas can take the form of geometric shapes like a rectangle using the Rectangle Select tool, which I've been using throughout this tutorial so far, or you can draw an ellipse using the Ellipse Select tool, which I did in the beginning of this tutorial, and I'll hit Control shift a to deselect that. However, there are also other tools that allow you to freehand draw selection areas, such as the Lasso tool over here. So if I click on my Lasso tool, this just allows me to freehand draw a selection area and I'm just gonna make sure I connect the two points here, hit the Enter key. So now we have a free-handed selection area. And there are also other more specialized selection tools that each perform their own unique functions. And I'm not gonna go over those in this tutorial. They're all right here in your toolbox. I do actually go over these tools in my GIMP 2.10 Basics tutorial. So I definitely recommend you check out the selection tools portion of that tutorial if you're looking for more detail or more in-depth information about those tools. And of course, I'll link that tutorial in the description of the video. 
You can also draw selection areas using a few other tools. So for example, let me hit Control Shift A to select none on here. You can use the Ken Brewer Pass tool and that is named after our diamond Patreon supporter, Ken Brewer. So with the Pass tool, I can draw curves. And if you guys wanna check out an in-depth tutorial on the Pass tool, I'll link that in the description. I have an entire tutorial dedicated to mastering the Pass tool. But here you can see I can draw curves with my Pass tool. I'll hold Control to create a union between my last node and my first one that I drew. So that'll connect our path. And then I'll come over here to selection from path. And now our path area that I've drawn here has become a selection area. So that's another way to create a selection area. Or I'll hit control shift A. If I grab my text tool, I can click on my composition and I'll hold the caps lock key here. And I'll just type some random text. You can create a selection area from your text by right clicking here and coming over here to alpha to selection. So now our text has been outlined by these marching ants. And then if I come over here and hide my text layer, you'll see all that's left is the marching ants. So now I can come over here, create a new layer, and I'll just name this text selection, and let me turn my caps lock key off. And I'll hit OK. So now I can do whatever I want with this. I can paint it with the paint tool. I'll hit Control Z to undo that. Or I can come over here and grab my gradient tool and let's say I want to change the colors here. Let's just go with a random red and then a random blue and I'll click OK. Now I can fill in my text with the gradient and let me just come over here and change this to foreground to background. And so now you'll see that our text now has a gradient and it's going from that red foreground color to our blue background color. And I'll just grab my move tool here to apply that gradient. I'll hit Control Shift A to select none. And now we have our text here set up with this cool gradient going on here. So again, if you want more information on either the selection tools or the other tools that can be used, such as the pass tool and the text tool to create selection areas, I recommend you check out my two hour GIMP 2.10 basics tutorial on my channel. And of course I'll link that in the description and you can check out the respective tutorials for the pass tool and the text tool, which I will also link in the description of the video. So that's it for this selection area basics tutorial. This will be followed by my advanced selection areas tutorial. And I'll link that in the description once it's up and running. But if you like this tutorial or want to see other GIMP tutorials, please subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can also visit my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.